Margaret, you say that you hope the psychic can tell them the truth about Teresa because you suspect something at this time, right? Do you think Teresa's dating someone? She's she definitely. First of all, she said she couldn't go to Dolores' event. It's a little cocktail party. I'm not going to be here. Oh, no. Where, where are you going to be? be? Um, soccer tournament. Not one picture posted. She posts a picture of her f***ing oatmeal every day. You're not going to post a picture of Adriana's soccer game? Very suspicious. Dolores, Dolores, sorry I missed it. Oh, that's OK, Teresa. You know I'm not like yeah, that. I know, We're I not my, like I that. I think I had, no, I know. You were busy. I would, I, know, I, mean, I would have. Oh, come on. I would have, I, I think I had my daughter's soccer tournament. You I had um, Gabriella's soccer tournament. Exactly. Well, listen, I'm thinking the psychic's going to tell us Teresa, you know, is in love, has a boyfriend. No one talks about pineapple that much and tasting sweet unless they're getting their pussy. She's yeah. glowing. Yeah. yeah she's, she's so glowing. happy. She's, she's glowing. She acts like she wants to be set up, but she won't get set up. And she's always talking about sex. I'm like, you're, you're not talking about sex that much unless you're getting it. Unless you're getting railed. Yeah. Let's, exactly. Let's just have this psychic come clean and tell us the truth about Teresa. I want to tell you that your parents are so happy for you, Teresa. Love is in the air. And that they're embracing the relationship. Oh, girl, go get it, get it, get it. Yes, I feel like when she said that she approves, right? The psychic approves. I was like, all right, what do they approve of, right? Of course, she's got a guy. So at this point, Melissa, did you know if Teresa was involved with Louie? Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think I did. I think it was very, very new, to be honest, at this point. It was like really new. Um, but I did know that she had met someone. I knew she was seeing him. I think we were looking for her to like say that almost. Just like, all right, already, just come clean about it. You know, you're not getting the Academy Award. But she Award. did it, right? She did it? No. They're giving you the green light on that. Gina Marie, come clean. We know Teresa's I getting know. it. No. <laughs> Did you? You're going to meet the man of your dreams, um, you know, yeah. and the whole thing. Ton but tonight, huh? he's coming over. Yeah, he's coming over after we leave. You get your peach. She's going to get your peach kiss. <laughs> I know, her little peach. There is also the video Jennifer posted about her housekeeping staff. So for all you people out there, I need a live-in housekeeper. And the nanny that I had, she went back to her country. She ran away. I'm like literally embarrassed for her. You're very privileged, and you're talking about your biggest problem is, help me, I don't have a housekeeper. <laughs> it's just like, don't be tone deaf. I mean, she posts the video, it's very hard to get good help. I'm not sure that, like Margaret says, reading the room is, is that a skill nowadays? I don't know. I don't know, well, it's, it's, it has to be learned. You cannot teach it at this point, Margaret. I gave you guys a small moment in my life of what I was going through at that time. The housekeepers. The live was not for the fucking housekeepers, but it's what's happening in my life. And guess what? You came to my live. I didn't go to fucking your page. You want fucking current events? Go to Eyewitness News. Okay, because this is a housewives page. I'm going to be talking about getting turned up, glam, and bullshit that if you don't give a fuck about, leave. Nobody invited you anyway. You know why I can't find a housekeeper? Because they all suck. Nobody knows how to clean like I do. And everyone's telling me, oh, shut up. You do it yourself. Fine. I will do it myself. And I'll do it better than all these girls that come in. Well, Jennifer. And I'll look like a million bucks. That's why I can never find anyone. One time somebody came to my house. She came one time. I didn't even tell her to do much. And she's like, this job is not for me. I was like, are you kidding me? So imagine going through that at least 10 times, okay? Housekeepers coming in through a revolving door. I was going through like, oh my God, like really? Like, is it so much to keep a clean house? I'm not even that picky, but I'm proud of that. I'm proud that I caulked my own bathroom. I, I'm proud of that. You know why? I'm gonna make a prediction. Make a prediction. Like, it's something I can tell you, Margaret. I, I know this for to be true. What is wrong with Jennifer is never gonna change and it's not something that you can tolerate. I will never see a love, there will never be a love lost between the two of them. And by the it's way, not it's not that I don't care for her, because I do okay. care for her as a person. It's, okay. it's like she's in our friend group, she's a good mother, you know, I know she's a good wife, I know she has a good heart, but it's like, I always want to better myself, learn from other people, be appropriate. Correct. And, 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 and not I offend evolved. people. It's called evolution.
Yeah, exactly. Always better myself and always grow. I don't think she thinks that she has to grow. And that's what I find offensive. I'm not saying don't have someone help you clean your house, but don't go on social media where so many people are on social media. The world can see you. You are a public figure and you don't need to stick in people says it's so hard to get good help. I mean, I'm doing my own dishes. I mean, come on. We're in a pandemic. People are unemployed and I hate it when my housekeeper does the dishes in cold water. Are you an ass? I mean, is that something to complain about? People are dying. You think I'm making an impact? She told me that I don't understand the tone of the world that's going on right now. Oh, and your podcast is 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 current for up to date events. What are you talking about, Joey Fatone and the food trucks, oh plastic God. surgery and party planning? What is the difference between my live and your podcast? Jen, wait. Wait, Jennifer ate her Wheaties today. I yeah. have to say. Yeah, girl. Yeah. Yeah, bitch. No. It's my f***ing oh pen is what it is. You f***ing bitch. That's what it is. Is my f***ing pen. So, no, I'm not a sloppy drunk. I need, okay? I need some of that. I, I get water that. with ice. No f***ing sloppy drunks here. Okay? You're sloppy sober. How about that? Okay? You sloppy sober. And you're not even drunk. At least me, I have alcohol to blame. But anyway, like my point is, my Instagram live, yeah, I f***ing had a housekeeper in here that was doing origami. Okay, she was folding all my toilet paper and folding the bounty. And yes, it was very nice, but I almost didn't want to ruin it. It looked so nice. And I told her, listen, clean toilets are more important to me than the very fancy toilet paper, if you don't mind. Like, I don't need you to, like, waste time on that. Okay, so if I want to vent on my live, i.e., key word being mine, then I should be allowed to do it. So stop saying that I don't know the tone of the world or the room or whatever, okay? This is not fucking Connie Chung here. <laughs>Were you guys surprised by anyone else's reading that day? I was surprised Dolores broke down the way she did. I have never, like, she, she's a tough cookie. I mean, you don't, you rarely see Dolores cry, and she, like, lost it. Your grandparents, they sit on a couch together, and a big-sized dog jumps up, and she said, tell her Boo is here. <gasps> She lost it, and I was like, felt so bad. I've never seen her cry like that before, ever. I've never seen Dolores cry before. So when I, yeah, she I'm cried, I was- I'm a little embarrassed. No, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. I was I'm so embarrassed. Broken. Oh God, I'm so embarrassed. My kids are gonna see me cry. No, so I was so heartbroken when I saw Dolores cry, because I never see her break down. And I was dev. I started crying when she started crying. I was devastated. You know, you're so good, sweet, so sweet. No, um, I was you so know, like heartbroken. You know, on the heels of everything that was going on, like when I heard her um, speak to Margaret and she, Margaret got emotional and she was hitting on things for Margaret. Is there a father figure that's crossed over for you and connected to the name Bernie? Yes. Okay. And then to Michelle. Michelle? Yeah. Do you have a grandfather that's crossed over? Yes. Was he from another country, Portugal? Yes. Oh my God. And then, you know, she came to me, so she kind of like, like gave herself some credibility before she got to me. So I was, it was so believable when she told me these things. And to hear of my dog, like, oh my God. To hear from people that have passed on, especially my dog Boo, was so beautiful to me and comforting that um, I was excited about that and emotional as you could see. Yes, just yes, that was sad. Me. That was very, was, yeah, that was too much. Was and, too Uncle much. Pee -wee, and, and Uncle Pee-wee, and Uncle Pee-wee. And Uncle Pee-wee. Who would know you have an Uncle Pee-wee? Unbelievable, yeah. Um, it's in my grandmother's obituary. So anyway. Oh, okay, um, listen, do you think she looked that up? I, my sister sent it to me to the other day. Who had time to look up so much? I don't know, not me. But then what did the psychic say? The psychic says she, has, she needs to get rid of David in order to move on, right? The psychic said you care more about the dogs than you do David. <laughs> is your grandmother saying, is he your soulmate? No, well, do you know if he is or not? I can if she wants yeah. to sure, know. Sure, tell me. Is he He's not. Right. Dolores more upset about her dog than David. Yeah, she knows her dog longer. Dogs don't. My dog do, dogs is, don't. A dog. A dog loves you unconditionally. If you yeah, want to know you what it's like to doesn't be give really you any loved, lip. get a dog. Yeah. It's unconditional. Exactly.
She cried for the dogs. And then when David came, it was almost like she knew what the psychic was going to say. You know, maybe David and I will just park gracefully, but it's okay. I'm okay with it. It's that. okay. It was almost like, all right, you could just, you could just tell me. There's nothing that anyone can tell me in my life right now. I know how this play ends. I know what to expect. I've been around the block more than once. I lived the life of a few people. You know, I've lived a lot. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty intuitive to what's going on. So there was nothing the psychic I was going to, like, oh, my God. Anything she said after mentioning my dog, I could give two shits what she said after that. I wasn't upset about David uh, not being my soulmate. No shit. No shit. Jennifer, at the psychic party, your mom actually comes up in your reading. That was so wild. Does she perceive herself as an abused woman? Yes. She thinks that he abused her. Yes. Oh. She's so hurt, she thinks you're enabling the father. So I need you to say to your mother, Mom, you're right, and I love you and I support you. You guys don't understand the big picture. My mom came from the village in Turkey. My dad was from the adjacent village. Back then, you saw a girl at church, you asked for her hand, and they made a match. My mother was 16, and my father was 26 years old. She wanted to get married so that she can get out of the house. And then, once she got engaged to my dad, she told my grandmother that she didn't want to marry him, and my grandmother said no. My grandmother said, we already did an engagement party. We're going to be shamed throughout the whole village. You must marry him. So she married him and within a year, he said that he was gonna pick her up and move her to America. My mother always tells me that her father told my dad, if I had known my daughter was going to move to America and you were gonna take her away from us, I would never have given her to you. So my mom's gone through a lot of her own version of trauma. And like my dad's done the best that he can, but he's not affectionate. Culturally, they don't show the man to show love or affection to his woman. I didn't abuse her. You see any time I abuse her? No, Daddy, I, I never I saw anything. you. But if right. she believes that she's abused, she has the right to you feel what? how she's going to feel. It's not beating people as abuse. Right. Emotional abuse, it's worse. Boss, boss, you never be happy. I was happy before I was happy. You lie. You see, you see. Certainly, the frictions are here and the frictions are real. And, um, uh, you know, sometimes it's our memory of the past and sometimes we only remember the worst rather than remember the good moments. And if you're only remembering the worst, then you think that your life was miserable. So, um, you know, her mom is struggling with the, you know, uh, her memories of the relationship. Many traditional marriages sometimes had that, but even a non-traditional marriage where you fell in love and now there's falling apart and trying to work through that is not easy my dad wasn't a loud man he wasn't a violent man he never drank he smoked his cigarettes and he watched the news every night he was a very very simple man but having said that he wasn't affectionate either he didn't know how to show her love he didn't say like let me surprise you or let me take my kids to dinner he didn't know how to do any of that so like now my mom is like watching my life i think and everybody's life and she's thinking like maybe somehow she got cheated and here I am taking in my dad, catering to my dad hand and foot. My dad gets to be with the kids every day. He gets to enjoy them. And somehow she's on the outs, living in a house by herself. She's probably looking at this situation thinking, how the hell did this happen? So ultimately me taking my dad away is really to give my mom peace of mind. But when the psychic told me that my mom feels that she has been emotionally abused by my father throughout their marriage. Now, my mom wants me to punish my dad for something it is that she thinks my dad did to her because it was always me and my mom. I never really even had a relationship with my dad. It's not until my dad moved in with me that my, me and my dad have started to be, become friends. Now, I notice that he's like a soft-spoken, funny guy, you know, but I never knew that growing up. So what the psychic said to me really just gave me an aha moment that I need to be more sensitive and realize how my mom is seeing everything. Because in her eyes, this man emotionally abused her and I'm siding with him in her eyes.
Joe and Melissa, you guys go out to dinner at Rails, and then you and Joe kind of reflect on, you know, some of the first moments, early moments in your relationship. I love your drive. You know, you gotta work. But just don't forget about it. I'm not forgetting about you. I'm right here. Well, you know, well, I really you. am. It was very, I think it was very real for us at that point that we needed to sit down and like, this is not funny. This is not a joke. Like, we need to like get ourselves together and, and get on the same page. And I think that's why we were trying to do that with that dinner. We were trying to just get on the same page. And I feel like even there, we struggled a little bit. Actually, it all coming to a head also in front of our friends that night. We used to just be so attached and I'm still like that. She's just changed. You turned into this different businesswoman. If I have a little success in my own personal life, cares, it's I not against you. Because when you just focus too much on work, you just become, you just become different. You like you become hardcore because everything is work and business and hard and and you, you're just too focused and you forget about normal life, and and that's what I was feeling, and we're not you I'm not used to that. Like this is serious. Like this is getting very real, and it started off bickering a year ago. It's escalating, and we're we're really coming to like some type of like breaking point here. And let's make sure we turn the corner together, and and, and don't go separate ways and joe says that he appreciates the little gestures do you do little things to let him know how much you enjoy being his wife i feel like i do but i think he feels like i used to do that so much more it's just the stupid little things the little compliments here and there the little like acts of appreciation where you know just like the little like i feel like when i'm tired i'm tired a lot at night and i'm just done i worked all day i do the kids all day i get exhausted and i almost feel like well rubbing your arm is extra like like where i have <laughs> like get patting you and all that is just extra but i know he needs extra sometimes so it's like if i love my marriage enough and I, if i love him enough i'm gonna give him what he needs and and that's what I have learned that he's he he's missing me doing those little things and that's where he's feeling lost so I'm trying